This is a brain, a little over a kilogram of soft, squishy tissue that is responsible for everything we perceive, think, feel, and do. It is often called the most complex object in the known universe, for good reason. There are around 86 billion neurons in our brain, with trillions of connections among them. The goal of neuroscience is to figure out what brains do, and how they do it. People have been interested in brains for a long time, but for most of history we didn't have the tools to study them in very much detail. We did learn that nervous systems are bioelectrical networks, that damaging certain parts of the brain can be associated with specific behavioral symptoms, and that if we stimulated small parts of the brain with electricity, we could change what Don't people experience. But this isn't a history class. Today we have a huge array of tools to probe, measure, and manipulate brain cells. And some of the most exciting tools we use to study brains weren't invented by humans at all. Instead, scientists found them in nature. A glowing protein from jellyfish can be used to visualize cells. By recombining it with two other proteins, it becomes a sensor that gives a visual readout of neuronal activity. A light-sensitive channel, part of the photosynthetic machinery of a single-cell marine algae, can be used to manipulate neuronal activity with light. And enzymes found in viruses, bacteria, and yeast that function as genetic switches can be used to selectively control these natural biotechnologies in targeted subsets of brain cells. What these tools all have in common is the use of genetic engineering of neurons to manipulate and measure their neural activity and see how it affects brain function and behavior in various kinds of animals. Because we aren't the only ones with brains. Mice, fish, insects, even microscopic worms all have brains made up of neurons that work fundamentally the same way ours do. In Biology 580, Genetic Approaches to Neural Systems, we look deeply at these technologies and the research that is being done with them by reading and discussing recent papers from the primary literature. My name is Michael Hendricks, and I teach this class together with Alana Watt. We're both associate professors in the Department of Biology, and we love teaching this class because it's so different every year, all because of the unique perspectives that you, the students, bring to it each time. And this year is going to be even more different than most years, because although we usually do this all sitting around a table drinking coffee and tea together, well, 2020 is a little different. But it's still going to be fun, and we're still going to focus on talking to each other in real time over the internet. We're also going to do some practical science career activities like peer review and writing grants. So welcome to Biology 580. We look forward to seeing you in September. Thank you.